right. I'm excited to be here. It's just super fun to watch everybody in the chat. Um, I was really worried about conferences going online, but oh my gosh, y'all at EduConf have been killing it. This is such a great community. Um, it makes me really happy. So we uh, today are going to be talking about the control container in Angular, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about Tom Nook too. Uh, my name is Jennifer Wadella. If you're interested in following me on Twitter, you can follow me at like only with Betty. Um, I lead Angular Consulting at a company called Batovi, and I would consider myself a pretty expert tarantula catcher. I'm struggling, y'all. Um, quarantine has been hard. Uh, it's It's been really rough on me, and this picture is so true. Like, my sanity is hanging on by a shred, and that shred right now is Animal Crossing. So I, I've been playing a lot of that when I'm not sitting at my computer writing Angular code. Um, and like, I'm really good at Animal Crossing. Like, I am so good that Tom Nook, like our raccoon capitalist overlord, keeps asking me for favors. Like, he needs me to help him do stuff around his island. That's how good I am at Animal Crossing. Like, I don't want to brag, but I'm pretty awesome. Uh, and so most recently, Tom has come to me and he's like, hey, Jennifer, like, we have all these new island residents moving in. Like, thank you so much for bringing all these people to our island. But, you know, um, my point of sale system is is really flat slacking, and I need a better way for um, people to apply for home loans to to get their first house and um, to start to get upgrades for their houses. So, like, I, I know you write code. Like, can you can you build me um, some sort of like POS? And I just have a, he has a couple requirements for for this point of sale system. Uh, he wants it to be really easy to use, both for himself and for people moving to the island. And so he's like, all right, uh, go ahead and build this one. Um, if you would like to hang out uh, and play around with this app along, uh, while I'm talking, here is the link. Uh, if you are an Animal Crossing fan and are looking for more friends, I would encourage you to enter your switch code in this application, and uh, we can all play with each other and have a blast throughout this quarantine. But uh, back to our application, Tom's got a couple requirements for me. First of all, um, he wants this app to show outstanding loans, so we can quickly go in and see um, how much money we all owe him uh, to make our houses. Uh, he also wants a really easy way to create new loans, and along with it being easy, it needs to have a really simple interface. So I, I've been around the block with Angular Forms. This isn't a huge deal for me, so I go ahead and, and start working on this application. I'm like, all right, I'm probably going to have a loan structure that looks something like this. We definitely want to know our loan applicants' names. Maybe we want to be able to get their friend code. We want to know what island they're from. Uh, what loan type they're working on, what the cost of that loan is, and allow them to make an initial deposit. Maybe some of the people on the island have been saving up for a while and, and they want to make a deposit uh, and also select their, their roof color and then um, we'll show them whatever their, their balance is. Deposit and a promo credit. So simple enough. Uh, I can go in and I can create a form for this uh, where I'm getting all those values. Everything is going to be required except for the friend code in case social they don't share that information um, but everything else is going to be required for them to go ahead and apply for this home loan and for it to go into the comps uh, so I go ahead and I create a pretty easy form here where I am binding my my loan application uh, form group that I've created to the form group directive and I'm using uh, the form control name directive to um, tie all of my um, elements back to uh, so Pretty simple. I'm I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, I've got some like sliders going on, so we can toggle or slide what our deposit looks like. Uh, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, so it's going to look something like this. Um, I've got my very fancy nice application. Isabel is there to help me through every step of the way uh, and figuring out what. So, like, I'm feeling pretty good about this. This is a really great experience for our potential island users. I think it's going to be a really great experience for Tom. Um, so I'm really excited to go and show this. But I do. And he looks at it and he's like, well, I, I guess it's okay. But you know what? I feel like it would really be a lot more simple for users if we had like kind of a multi-step where they only had to fill out a couple form fields each step of the application so they don't get overwhelmed. You know, the, this is a, a very small island. Some people might be a little more um, open-minded. Uh, we need to make this form is really easy for them to handle. So I'm like, Okay, Tom, I can, I can make that happen. So I go back to my code, and uh, I think, okay, well, the first page, let's say we want to show just, like, personal information. We'll show our first name, our last name, and code, and our address. 
Uh, the second page will allow the user to select the loan type and the roof color. And then the third page will allow the user to make some sort of deposit and then display uh, the remaining amount they will have due based on the deposit. Um, and you know, maybe uh, we're gonna be repeating the address fields throughout the application in different areas if you know, allow a user to update their loan or maybe um, to pay off their house and then decide they wanna move it, their address for that. Um, it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and pull out those address fields and So got a pretty good idea of what I'm gonna do. Uh, so I go back to my code base uh, and the first thing I do is I take my form and I'm like, all right, well, I wanna have multi-steps across different routes. So I'm just gonna slap the router outlet inside of my loan application and it'll be really easy for me to um, just kind of put all my different form pieces on uh, different components rendered by the route. And um, I think that'll pro uh, provide a really solid use. I love this, he's gonna maybe, maybe discount I have to give him probably not a girl can um so I go ahead and I want to take out my step one um so I'm just going to pull uh my, my form controls for my first name and my last name for the switch code um, and I've got some address fields that I've so I'm going to put that that's going to be um, inside of my uh first component displaying at my uh, so I go ahead, I compile this code, ready to go, and yikes, I have got an error message. What does form control name must be used with? Do you want to add a form? Well, I do, I do have that form group directive, right? Like I did that, um, and I have that in the router. Um, so why, what's happening? So I've got my form control names that um, are trying to uh, look up by string what that control is for my form group directory. Do I not have, maybe I don't have access. That must be. Yeah, okay, so all right, here's my problem. Um, my form control name that um, I'm looking up does not have a, a form group defined. So how do we figure out that? Because I, well, I'm definitely going to need a way to ask. All right, so let, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Uh, there's a really great class available in Angular called the Control Container. Um, and this is a base class for directives that can multiple registered in NG um, And it's only used by the, the form. All right, so let's, let's break that down a little bit. What is that actually? A base class for directives that contain multiple registered in Okay, so that means this is going to be some sort of directive that has uh, multiple controls inside of it. So like our form group, we created our, our um, form group and then inside of there we had a form control for each piece of data we need to collect from our user to create their loan app. So that's what's going on there is it's going to walk up um, the tree and um, look to find a directive that has those, those multiple registered instances. So that's our way that we can go ahead and access our um, form group directive from wherever we are. <clears throat> All right, so um, we can handle this situation in a couple different ways. We need to basically make our control container providable available to those child components that we have nested inside the route. <clears throat> so if we look at option one, uh, we can inject it uh, in, in the view uh, providers array inside of our child. So in our view pro providers, we're gonna provide control container and we're going to say that we want to use the existing form group directive. And so the view provider is going to make um, the, the control container uh, available just to the component that we're using it in. Um, so it's gonna walk up the tree and then it's going to look for, find our form group directive and uh, know that we're gonna to wanna to use that and allow us to access that in our next component. Um, so if I go ahead and I um, provide it to my view provider, I don't have to do anything to change um, my HTML that I've got my, my form control names in. Uh, it's just going to uh, be able to find it. We have no errors, like we're in business, this is a great solution. Um, we, we don't have to worry about uh, any, any more errors about not being able to find our form. Uh, so that might be kind of tedious though, because in this situation, we would have to go in every child component um, and in our view providers, um, inject that control container with uh, and use existing of our, our form group drive. Um, so maybe a more pragmatic way would be to inject it in the provider of our parent component. 
Um, and so what this is going to do if we uh, uh, inject this in our parent providers is it's going to make um, the control container available to all of our child components. So um, the step one component that I'll, I'll have it access to, if I want to put it inside a nested address component, um, I will have access to that parent form group directive. So that'll make it available to everybody. Um, so this is a really great solution um, if you, all you need to do is handle your binding via form control name. However, um, there are a lot of situations that we might actually need to access um, our, our form controls programmatically. So let's say we have a setup like this and I want to make sure that a user can't move to the next step until I have the validity of a certain form. Um, so maybe I want to know that my first name form control is valid before I enable my next step button. Um, how do we go about getting a hold of that form control? Uh, so option number three is uh, to inject via the constructor of our child components. And so again, this might be a little bit more um, repetitive uh, because we're having to do it on every child instance that we want to have programmatic access to our, our form controls or our form control group in. So this uh, will look something like this, where we're going to go ahead and inject this in our control container, or excuse me, um, uh, inject this in our constructor, and then we'll have access to our public control container method. Um, so this will allow us to do uh, our, our normal uh, reactive forms methodology where we can um, get our control. So when the control container control is gonna uh, refer to that form group directive that I have set, <clears throat> um, and so that is going to allow us to call get on whatever form control uh, by that string name that we want and get any properties on that. So in this case, I might want to check the valid property. Um, we can have that access to get everything that we need to do. The important thing to remember in this case, um, if you are no longer using the view providers or providers, is we do need to um, bind that form group um, provided by or that we're getting access to via the control container in a form group directive again. So our form control name. So I don't want that to possibly. Um, so from there, we can do, start to do really complex things uh, where we can actually start listening to our controls. Um, if maybe we, in a certain step of our wizard, uh, we want to uh, understand what our loan type is. So in step two, uh, we will set our loan type. Um, and then in step three, we're going to take a deposit, but we want to know what that loan um, type is. So then we can get the amount of that loan type and then subtract the deposit from that loan amount to show the use of the remaining balance. That's what will happen. Um, so that allows us to handle situations. Um, so if you haven't looked at uh, the uh, sample application that I've built for Tom, uh, this is kind of what it looks like now, uh, where our next button is disabled. I have a couple different form controls going on um, that I'm able to fill out, uh, and it's going to check the validity on these changes. And then once all of my required fields have been filled out, I can go ahead and progress. Um, so here I can select my loan type. It's going to show me the cost of whatever that loan type is. I can select my color because Tom is very considerate and lets us change our roof color for free. We can change our roof color for free every time we pay him this amount of money um, and then go on. And then I can see my remaining amount due is that 198,000 bells. Uh, and then I can see uh, how my deposit changes the amount remaining that I will have to do. And I can go ahead and submit my application summary of my loan. So pretty, pretty cool stuff that we're working on here. All right. Uh, so in summary, if you are dealing with nested form controls um, or nested components that you're wanting to have one cohesive form group, which is my preference because you have... Um, the ability to call dot valid on that form group and um, check the validity of all the controls within it. Uh, you can use the control container to give um, your components access to your parent. Uh, so the demo app, again, is available online. I would encourage you all to enter your switch codes in there. Um, if you're interested in the code or need more examples, um, I have the uh, code base available there. Special friend to my, my friend Matt Warger for hooking me up with uh, the API so it can be interactive for you all today. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I know that I've given talks on Angular Forms before, and this is a really common problem that a lot of people um, come and tell me. They're like, hey, how do I deal with nesting components um, and being able to um, 
get access to my um, forum group directive um, across all these different situations. And so Control Container is a very elegant solution for a lot of that. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you all can now create nested forms to your heart's content and have a blast. Um, and while I'm here, because we're all isolated, come play with me. Uh, I would like to be friends with you. Here's my switch code. Um, it's also at the top of my slides. Um, <clears throat> so look forward to seeing you all in the chat. Looking forward to seeing you all um, on each other's islands. If you have any questions, I am super excited to see them in the chat. Um, and once again, slides are available here and my code is